Hey, everybody. Welcome once again to Shaper Sessions. Really excited to have everybody joining us here today. Without further ado, we're going to cut over to Sam in Oakland, California, and talk about customizing tool shadow box foam with Origin. Magic. Okay, so this is, yeah, what Joe was just describing here. This is the uh, SIS-1 uh, that comes with the Father's Day deal that's currently running. Uh, we're going to work you through, walk you through what exactly uh, goes on here, how to cut this foam. Uh, I'll also point out on our YouTube channel is a video that very thoroughly goes through every little step. What I'm going to do in this session is focus on creating some things, basic shapes on tool and uh, inserting them in here. Uh, just showing like how far you can go, you know, without firing up computer. Uh, that's one of the big uh, advantages of origin. Like often these things can be done without touching a computer, which is, uh, you know, nice. You remain in the wood shop and uh, not in your clean room somewhere else. So uh, yeah, this is the sustainer. This is the foam that ships in it and we'll pop this out. That's uh, what we're going to work with. And uh, this is the uh, frame or the panel we set up from the video. So uh, basically what we have here is on uh, Shaper Hub, there's a, uh, I can probably get Sean to show it actually, the, uh, there's the kit uh, for the Shaper uh, insert. Um, there's actually, there's this whole segment you can search by categories. One of them is called the uh, sustainer inserts. We'll see that in a second. And uh, they, uh, a bunch of us and the community have started uploading some uh, really interesting tool layouts. So you'll see here, there's the, the one, this is an example of one that accommodates everything for the workstation. So we uploaded this one, but the community is starting to upload their own uh, and there's a bunch of interesting examples like everyone at Shaper Tools has their own little custom variant with different things that they want to use on them uh, and the cool thing is you can mix and match so there's not only completely canned kits like what we see here there's also uh, individual object outlines so you know people have uploaded individual shapes of specific uh, components that you may want to put in your kit uh, and we'll go through, you know, how to mix and match and make it your own basically now. So, you know, we, we kind of developed this system so that, you know, we can cut these uh, different inserts out. Uh, and this really makes it kind of simple for anyone with stuff you have in your shop. For the most part, all you need is a, a board that's about two foot by two foot and then some two by fours and some shims. So the idea here is that you kind of, uh, you know, place this on top, you'll end up cutting this shape out in the first place, and then you can use that to insert the foam for later while you're cutting it. So let me pull this out. So for instance, in, what's really cool about this is because the tape is unique, uh, Origin can remember this tape, come back to it later. You'll notice here that I'm actually only cut half of this, but because I've already gridded, I've already placed the shape, I can kind of place this back in here and uh, I can get right back to work cutting out a new section or let's say I got a new tool or I wanted to change something. I could come back to this and uh, we'd actually be able to continue. So this kind of setup is actually in the video Sam has uh, online. It's a really good video that shows, you know, basically the entire process from start to finish. And, uh, you know, you can kind of go look at that later after the session's over if you're working on yours. but. We should hit most of the high points, but that has a lot of the details in it. Now you see I'm in the same state as Sean is. We've uh, dropped this fresh panel in here. Uh, I'm not actually going to cut the, uh, this project, but you would use the outline from this to create this fixture. Um, so we're now going to come over here. So I'm just going to use Ontool CAD. I'm going to make a few basic rectangles. I've already uh, measured uh, these with some calipers. Uh, so I know the dimensions and I know how deep these are going to be. Um, and we'll just walk through uh, a few of the steps that will make it uh, pretty uh, convenient for you to come back, add things as you as your kit develops. You can uh, adjust it and do it as you like. So um, I'm going to start with a new scan here. We'll go to uh, my screen. So new scan, start scan. 
So you'll notice now I don't have tape running through the center here of uh, where all this black area is now. So I've got to be sort of quite meticulous with how I move around this uh, to make sure that I get a good scan. I've got to always be seeing enough tape. So you'll notice here, it's starting to struggle a little. I need to make sure I can keep the top uh, in view, enough markers in view, and still see down the bottom. Um, so if you can just sneak along like so, it's going to tell you when it uh, can't track anymore. But uh, you'll see there, we've done the full thing. Now I'm going to do a grid uh, off the bottom of this. And that's just the standard process you're all familiar with, or maybe you're not. Here's the uh, gridding operation that we see in Humboldt. So uh, I'm going to take over from where Sam. Okay. So like Sam said, basically the point here is we need to make a grid. So we're going to touch two points on the edge of this material and one point over here. And that will give us a grid that we can then place files in. And uh, every time we place it, it'll be in the right spots. So I'm going to bring origin over here. And what I'm going to switch over to my tool view so you can see that. I know there's a little bit of glare, so I may have to turn this light off actually. Let's see if that's a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. So what's cool is you know if you've used Origin or haven't, uh, you'll know that now in Humboldt you can actually return to workspaces you've already scanned and used. This one is recognizing it because I just placed it down. So I'm going to go ahead and join that. Uh, and you'll see my my whole workspace is there. All the files I've already cut are there, et cetera. In Sam's case, what he was trying to show you is starting from scratch. So I'm going to do the same. So we're going to start by doing a quick scan. It's going to be a little harder. Normally, you, you wouldn't have the middle part cut out yet. So I uh, may need to go with a little bit more. There we go. OK. All right, so here's the scan. So great. Now we're going to lower the cutter to where I can touch the edges and make a grid. So new grid. I'm going to lower the bit down and I'm just going to lightly touch it up against the edge. So here we are at the right spot and I will lightly touch the edges. Okay, there's one. Let me set the depth first. Here's one. Okay, now I'm going to move the unit and I'm going to touch another point and you'll kind of see. Let me get to a point where I can see some tape. Here we go. Here's two. And then now I'll come up to the edge and you'll see the third point is right here. Boom. Now I have a grid set up that is actually referencing this piece of material here. So when I when I first placed it, I know I'm going to place four inches from the right side of this material and two inches up. So all I need to do is go on the screen and look up here until I see two or four and two. OK, so that's where I'm going to start placing files. So one thing we talked about, you know, there's the we already have a lot of these files set up online. I'm going to go ahead and just show you how to import one uh, clicking import. I've already added it to my Shaper Hub. So it's in my uh, it's in my files already, and I can just touch it, and you know you'll see now I get a little visual representation of where it goes, and then I'm just going to go to four and two, in place, and now that file that references the old one that I've already cut is right there. So all these things will line up uh, with the old file. So so if I wanted to keep cutting another part, I could do that, and if I wanted to let's say put a new object in, I can just kind of delete this file. And I now have a grid that's aligned to this material here. And I can kind of use, I can see on screen where uh, the old pieces are. So let's, let's, one of the things we are going to show, and actually, uh, I think this is a good, let me check time, 20 minutes in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to come back over here. Okay, so we're going to put a little woodpecker square in the foam. Um, so, I actually don't have the measurements, so I'm going to need to do that really quickly. Sam was going to run this one. Uh, I'm just going to measure it, and I'm going to use on tool CAD on Origin to put this in the foam. So that means basically measuring the key components of this and using the on tool design to put this into the material. So I'm going to start by measuring. 
I'll show you how I create it on the tool and then uh, I'll show you how to cut it. Okay. Let's go back to here. Okay. So, all right. So, wrong camera. Here we go. So, all right. So, first thing we're going to do is kind of pick roughly where we want it to be. Uh, it looks like it'll fit pretty much anywhere in here, but I'm going to. I'm going to pick kind of a spot. So we'll first start. I'm just going to measure this real quick. One point one and a quarter by six. So we'll start with that. So and if Sam comes back, let me know. Um, all right. So. OK, and maybe this is a good chance to roll into if if people don't know origin, there's actually a lot of functionality right in tool where you don't need a computer to design files. So circles, rectangles, slots, pen tool, uh, text. We even have a, uh, an extension that does box joints. All these things can be done right on tool. Uh, you just kind of click it. Uh, you can type whatever you want for the text tool. Get done, and then now that file gets generated instantly. So for foam, this doesn't make sense, but for a lot of the other uh, things it does. In this case, we're going to go with Okay, we're going to go with uh, the rectangle and we're basically just going to type in exactly the numbers we want. So the width was 1.125 and the height was six. So there we go. That's going to be the, the main part of the square. And then I'm just going to kind of select where I want it. I'm using the bottom left anchor point. So that way, when I add the other parts of the file, I can make sure they match up. So let's zoom back out just a little bit. Uh, and let's put it a little bit like right in here. Okay, so now I've placed that file. It's live. I can cut it right now if I want. But let's go ahead and place another couple files. Uh, and I will go ahead and measure the second one, which is probably the same thickness as my guess. Yep. One. Oh, actually, it's a little bigger. Yep. Yeah, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, Sam's here. Let's roll back into Sam. So, so as Sean was in, uh, we got the measurements here, so it'll be a little quicker. Um, oh, nice. All right. My uh, wife, her wired network was killing us. It had overheated and died, so we're back. Um, so now looking at my screen, you'll see I'm placing the second rectangle uh, using the bottom left anchor point. Uh, so that means it's going to align exactly where the first rectangle was placed, the same as Sean there. So uh, placing that. Now, if we zoom out, you'll see we've got the basics of uh, one of these guys uh, ready to be placed. So uh, we've got the depths here. Um, the long length is uh, point, about 0.7, uh, sorry, the short length is about 0.75 deep. So I'm just going to come over and start cutting this. Um, Noah, you'll be ready to uh, mute me when it gets noisy here. Um, and yeah. we'll see how it goes. Yeah. So I'm going to change my okay. cutter to quarter. And I'm going to do a touch off. So I've actually just moved over to my workstation. Uh, I don't want to touch off on spongy foam. Um, so I'm just going to do a touch off. So I've got a quarter inch cutter here, and we are good to go. You notice we can switch back and forward between workspaces now uh, super quickly and pick up exactly where we left off. So uh, I'm going to zoom in here. So I'm cutting on the inside of this line. I'm just using the stock cutter. Uh, I'm using a tiny offset here, and I'm going to cut this. I'm actually going to go to the full depth here, so 0.75, which is three quarters. There's a preset down here, which is super easy to click. Um, I'm using an up cutter, so it's going to extract all the chips, uh, and I'm actually uh, slowing down the spindle here to about four, four and a half. Um, so I don't want, I'll show you where that is. So this little dial here is where I'm changing the speed of the spindle. So I don't want the foam to melt. Uh, it's actually quite resilient and pretty uh, forgiving to cut, so uh, we don't need to get too worried about uh, melting it, but it pays to be cautious. So here we go. We're ready to go. We got a. We're doing a roughing pass, a slight offset. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll just do a finish pass for this because it's spongy anyway. Uh, it's it's actually quite forgiving. So um, we're good to go. Ready to mute, Noah?
All right. So for those of you seeing, uh, he's funding now. Really, at this point, for the film, it's just a, it's a pretty easy cut. Uh, you know, if he's worked with a lot of different materials, I'd say film is one of the, the nicest to actually get started with because it is a really forgiving material. Uh, it cuts super nicely. It's, it's a really good uh, material to get started with. I know a few people have reached out kind of scared about cutting foam, et cetera. There's no reason to be scared. It's, it's actually a really good uh, thing for new people to, to try. So, okay, so he, at, the, at this point, it's just about clearing out material. So he's changing over to a pocket mode, which now allows you to kind of remove all that material in the center. Uh, and at this point, you know, there's, there's a couple strategies with how you pocket. Uh, you know, we do we allow you to do kind of uh, rough pocketing, so you can kind of pocket as you like, depending on uh, how how much you want to take off per pass or the type of cut. Do you want to mow the lawn? Do you want to go in circles? There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, everyone will develop their own way of doing it, and it's just something you kind of will learn over time. So. That's the first little section there, uh, and you know it's always good to do test this. You know you can always make it bigger. You can't make it smaller. So it's always good to kind of stay on the small side and then use negative offsets to make those bigger over time. It looks like I, I guess that was a good fit. And Sam, we're going to go over and do the the other one as well. Cool. Okay, so now we we've, we've cleared out the bottom part. Uh, and we're going to go do the top one as well. You know, one of the cool things about foam too is because it is so forgiving and easy, you actually, you know, uh, especially for deeper stuff, you don't have to necessarily follow the bit diameter per pass rule. Uh, if you'll notice in this is the videos we've done, you can actually cut quite a bit deeper. Uh, like maybe, you know, it, you don't want to obviously cut below your cutting flute, so you got to be wary of that and, and know your cutter dimensions. But uh, you know, in a lot of cases, you can do half an inch, uh, three quarters of an inch per pass uh, once you start playing with them. I'd start with a quarter inch passes, and then as you get used to it, you'll know. Uh, really, the only way you can go wrong with the foam is to be cutting either too fast of a spindle speed or too slow with uh, your movement, and you'll notice. You'll kind of get the foam like burning and melting a little bit. So just make sure your speed's okay. Lower the spindle. Three or four is pretty good, we found. Um, and yeah. So, okay. So there we go. And maybe you can fix your other camera. All right. Be a uh, pretty firm fit. We're yeah, like line to line. Yeah. And you'll notice the corners here are kind of. Uh, they're, they're rounded with the radius of the cutter. Um, so there's a, because it's a quarter inch cutter, it's gonna leave a little rounded corner with that uh, as a radius. So that, that means if we're doing this exactly this dimensions, it, with foam, it'll flex and we can leave it, or we could come by and do dog bones right here on tool. What I'm gonna do right now though, uh, instead of doing that, we'll just make a finger pull, because at the moment, this isn't really convenient to get out. Um, because it's you know a friction set. Uh, I could also come by and do an offset and make it looser if I felt like it, but uh, just for now, we'll come back and do a finger pull. So what we're trying to get at here is it's very flexible to just, you call the shots as you go. It's much more like a traditional power tool, you know, you are making decisions during the fabrication process. So here I'm gonna uh, drop in a, go to the design mode. So I've gone from a cut. Cool. And okay. we'll do a one inch radius circle. And I'm just gonna drop it. Actually, I'm gonna disable the grid for this. So now you'll notice instead of locking, I'll turn it on again. You'll see uh, I'm jumping based on the grid position. Uh, and I actually just want to put it between the grids here. So I can disable the grid. And now you'll notice that these values just move uh, fluidly. There's no jumping. So I can you know, put it wherever I like. I just want it near that edge. And I'll do this 0.75 deep as well. Um, so this is going to get a bit noisy again, Noah. Yeah, so you'll notice Sam's pointing pretty deep in one path. Uh, once you 
got a few of these. It, it's kind of really nice and quick. Um, I think one thing, what, and we're going to jump into a little bit of like, you know, we've had some questions already that I've seen. A, you know, what do I do if I, I want more complex geometry? We're going to get into that in just a minute, but let's wrap this one up on tool and then we'll jump into how do you do a more complex object. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a very basic object, uh, but that's, you know, not going anywhere. No, I think that's good. Uh, Sam, I think you should actually show the little dog bone trick because I think a lot of people haven't yeah, yeah. seen that before. So yeah. maybe just do a couple of them real quick and explain For how sure. it works. So uh, when we talk about dog boning, back to your camera. yeah, when we're talking about dog boning, uh, that's when you cut. You'll see here if we zoom or we look closely, we can see uh, that blue line doesn't go all the way to that hard 90 degree edge. So when we, if we were fitting this into solid wood or something that didn't give or flex, uh, this simply would collide and wouldn't fit in. So uh, if I turn this back to an inside cut, and then I do an offset. So offsets are moving the position of this line relative to the green line, my final dimension. So you'll see the dotted line is my tool path. That's the center of where my cut is moving. So uh, if I do a negative offset, say uh, point, uh, what do we do? Oh, five negative. Let's take a look at this. So you see here now, I can actually go to this corner, and I'm going to power up. It's noisy again, Noah. I'm going to plunge. Uh, you see, I'm sitting on the outside edge of this corner. In this state, origin is not going to move. It's going to plunge in this point and not continue moving forward because uh, if I was down here, it would it would like round the corner and keep moving. But if I move away like this, the closest point to the center is the point at the very edge of that. So uh, that will enable me to effectively peck a little hole right down in that corner that mills out that material that we left behind. So we'll do that now. Yeah, so what, what's nice about this, it's a super quick operation. Uh, you know, the, if, if you want a minimal dog bone that's just a tiny bit, you can do it as Sam says. There's another option where you just change the online from inside, and that will actually plunge right in the corner. You'll get a bigger dog bone, but you won't have to fiddle with the offsets at all to get that minimal dog bone. Um, and then you just kind of go around the each corner and plunge, retract, plunge, retract, and uh, it's pretty quick. It's kind of a nice way to save yourself from going back to the computer if you're working on a file that you forgot to add it in, or in this case, we're running it kind of really quickly. Uh, and it's nice to be able to do right on the fly. So, okay, so I don't know if you can get in there, Sam, and kind of just maybe pull, pull it out and show people what it looks like. So uh, yeah, there you'll see we've got uh, little dog bones in the corner here, a uh, little finger pull, and uh, this guy is now easy to get mm, in and out, nice. and isn't going anywhere. So uh, yeah, all the depths you can dial in because you digitally describe how deep you're going to go. Uh, you're going to get that right every time. Yeah. Okay. So awesome. So that that's that's kind of the quick on tool CAD for simple objects, but you know. Obviously, there's a lot more complex objects. How do you get those into the tool? You don't always want to be working fluidly on the tool. Sometimes you just want the file and you want to make it turn out in the material quickly. So uh, I think that's a good time to you know talk quickly about you know some of the ways we can do this. So you know we we've already shown you the Shaper Hub side where you can go and download those files, uh, place them. The, the object outlines have a bunch of different types for you know, certain chisels, certain hammers. A lot of people have been uploading those things. And if, if you're creating files yourself, upload them. Let other people use those. And, uh, you know, we're all helping each other out there. So, so that's one way. The second way uh, is to design them yourself. You know, if you're, uh, if you know vector uh, design files, such as Illustrator or Inkscape, or, you know, we did a, a thing last week about vector, which now works in Humble. Uh, which is a web-based uh, vector design program, you can use that to actually build these shapes. And Sam has an awesome video that shows you how to take a 
thing from uh, the real world, a wrench, the wrench for origin uh, for the collet, and then actually how to get that in the vector into a file that matches the real world. So there's, there's a plenty of videos on there. We're not going to take a whole lot of time. We're actually getting ready to run out. Uh, so make sure you go check that out. Just search vector and shaper. Maybe Ted can throw it in the comments for people. Uh, that's one way. The other way is shaper assist. So we've had, you know, a lot of people who they actually don't want to work, worry about computers. They want to, you know, organize their tools or get things done. So if you want, just shoot us an email. We have that new, or we don't even, don't shoot us an email anymore. Go to the website for shaper assist, shapertools.com slash assist, and actually look through there. It, we actually have some good, like, general pricing in there now and kind of what each each thing is so you can kind of get a feel for it but you know each project is going to be different uh you're going to have to submit stuff and maybe this is a good time to pop over to sam he's actually going to show you some of the best ways to submit things to shaper assist so that we can get the files turned around quickly and match perfectly with the, your objects yeah so uh Assist is set up, uh, there's an excellent little type form set up so that you just enter all the details uh, about your project. And that can be as fully fledged as like, oh, I've developed a uh, CAD file, uh, but I'm just struggling to make it manufacturable with Origin, or I need help with this, or you know, wherever you stall out, Assist's there to uh, take you to the finish line and get you cuttable files on Origin. Um, so everyone, uh, Contributing to the assist program is experienced with using origin. They can guide you through, you know, cutter selections and uh, the most streamlined approach to getting good outcomes uh, and help you avoid some pitfalls. So even if it's, you know, not something you're regularly going to do, uh, it's a great way to just uh, get familiar with origin and have someone sort of uh, double checking what you're up to. So this is an example I was looking at. Say uh, I wanted to uh, make a little tool shape for this uh, in Shadow Foam. Uh, and I wasn't comfortable using 2D vector editing packages or uh, heavy CAD packages like uh, Fusion. Um, we have a plugin for Fusion that can also export fully developed 3D forms ready for Origin. Uh, this is a great way to communicate with Assist. So you could, uh, hopefully this isn't overexposed. So what I've done is I've placed this on a, just a, a panel of paper. Uh, and traced around the outside edge, uh, trying to keep it closely fitting as possible. Uh, and I've put a couple of strips of tape here because uh, you know it's possible for people to shoot things from a weird angle and it not be really obvious what the absolute outline is. So if you get some you know dimension references, you should have tape shape of tape available. That's a good one. Uh, and then call out. I've got the um, the model number here. You know it's Fritz uh, eleven. You know, that can often help us track down more info about exactly what size these things are. So with this information and say, you know, go through the type form and say, uh, I want to make a uh, shadow uh, tool holder profile. Uh, we can then uh, very quickly get you up and running with that. So that's, that's one of the approaches to assist. Obviously, you can do a napkin sketch and just sort of broadly describe what you're trying to do. Uh, and depending on the workload, the, you know, the amount of time and energy it'll take to prepare, we'll come back to you with a quote and you can choose whether or not to pursue that. Um, so there's no cost to submitting something and just getting an idea for how Assist works. So we'd encourage you to drop in assist.shapertools.com and uh, take a look. Cool. And then, you know, when you're taking that picture, make sure you're, you're directly above it shooting oh, yeah. down so we don't get any of that parallax uh, image that sometimes comes if you shoot at the angle. So really vertical straight down and that will give us a good image to start with. Um, okay, so let's see where we're at. We have, uh, what, three minutes left in the session. And I think maybe this is a, you know, we're a little late, but uh, let's try to wrap it up real quick. Oh, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go five. So, uh, so Sam, I think this is a good time to talk a little bit about the foam real quick because i know we've already got some questions about what kind of foam can you cut yeah how yeah, do you yeah, cut yeah. it etc so like maybe you can go over the bits and the type of foam and then just kind of get some of those questions out of the way so this particular foam uh we used a lot of closed cell uh, sorry cross-linked polyethylene so it's a closed cell uh relatively high density foam uh which is kind of critical to uh if it's too flexible Origin won't get a sound reference point on its base to uh, remain stable throughout the cut. 
and it will like distort and drag as you cut it. There is still a little amount of force that gets put into the foam. So if it's too flexible, it's gonna uh, deviate and uh, fail and get you re really odd outcomes, odd shapes. So um, yeah, cross-linked polyethylene, uh, denser, you know, this is four pounds per square foot uh, approximately. Uh, that's a good, good, good area. You know, that gets you a nice firm sort of uh, object to work with. Now, this is actually really forgiving in terms of cutters. You notice, you know, I was on four and a half using a stock cutter designed for cutting wood. Um, is the uh, is the uh, equivalent? Yeah, you might not be able to see that very well. So this is just an up cutter. Uh, we've had people even report that down cutters get them pretty good results. So uh, you can see there's just a tiny bit of fuzz along the top edge here. Uh, that can be treated with heat if you just get like a, uh, don't get anything crazy hot, like a hot air gun is probably good. And if you just run over it slowly, keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't start to distort. And, uh, you know, you can cook it and melt it and get a different shaped outcome. But uh, yeah, that's that's the that's the big takeaway. Just stock cutters, uh, modest cutter speed, and get dense dense foam. Um, one thing you have to keep in mind when you're cutting with Origin, it's always tempting to apply a pretty reasonable amount of downward pressure. On wood, we actually recommend that. So that makes sure that nothing vibrates and you're sort of firmly in command of the operation. There's no weird uh, forces and oscillations creeping in. With foam, you have to kind of back off that a little bit. Uh, and that can like reduce the, the quality of the, the bottom of your cut, the bottom of the pocket. But you, if you press super hard on this, you'll just get so much friction, uh, it'll be really hard to push the machine through it. So you just have to kind of hold it without significant downforce and make all your force uh, lateral moving across the surface. Um, one note that is kind of interesting, uh, if you get the, We've got the little eight, uh, eight inch collet on our store. Uh, you can actually buy really cheap roto zip cutters, um, which do not use these for wood or anything hard. So these are the, uh, just the standard roto zip cutters. Don't get, they've got some that are for like following. They have a, a different tip geometry. This is just a sort of spiral up cut. Uh, this enables you to, like I could have totally avoided doing these dog bones by using this cutter for my perimeter. So uh, because it's only an eighth of an inch diameter uh, and I have cutting flutes that I think are one and a quarter, uh, you can actually cut through a lot of foam and keep quite tight corner details, uh, which help with like one of the examples is this. So there's a lot of really pointy areas that you don't want catching your foam on. So cutters like this can be helpful for that sort of thing. Um, I think that's a, I mean, that's the basics there, Sean. Uh, yeah. 